Okay, welcome to the new class. Um, the very first lesson is going to, I've entitled it, Relationships are a Good Investment. And uh, there are so many things that you can invest in. And we think of often as investments as money that you would invest maybe in the stock market or in a savings account or something like that. But we make investments all our lives in, th in different things, using different things. We invest funds, we invest time, we invest effort. And some of those investments are, are uh, not worthwhile at all. You know, you've got some weird hobby that you invest all this time in and it really isn't going to turn out to be anything. Um, but uh, I'm going to stand here this morning and tell us that we need to invest in relationships. Investing in relationships is going to pay big dividends in the long haul. Uh, relationship with others around us and relationship with God. Those are times that we invest in those relationships uh, will bring great returns for us. And especially for those of you who are married or are going to get married, investing in that relationship, that marriage relationship, is the best investment you will ever make it will have the highest return. Um, social media is out to try to, I don't know if they're trying to do, but they are redefining relationships in our American culture. Social relationships, social media is trying to redefine those relationships. And uh, they're doing a good job of redefining relationships. How many friends do you have on Facebook? Any volunteer? 500? As of this morning when I was checking, 581. 581 friends. Are those really friends? That's the question. Are, do you have a relationship with those people? That's the question. And many of them are just just, just that. They're, they're out there in... in, in uh, in the ether sphere, or whatever you want to say. They are there, but they're not really relationships that we have, real life relationships. For those of you who have real life friends, how many of those are going to be there for you in uh, real tough life situations? I was talking to a guy at work here recently, and he he said, I, I, I hope this guy has five friends to carry his casket. <laughs> Six, however many there they use, to carry that casket at his funeral. Think about this seriously. How many real friends do you have? Well, how many real relationships have you developed? And uh, that, that says a lot about the relationships. God said from the beginning, it's not good for man to be alone. Data collected from 148 studies involving more than 300,000 people conducted over three decades shows just how true this verdict from God is. People who have no social life are 50% more likely to die early than those who are well connected. Those who socialize regularly with family and friends live an average of 3.7 years longer. Bet you didn't know that. Those who, are, who have good relationships, there's something about having good relationships that makes us more healthy and more well-adjusted. Bert Uccino, the professor who led the research at universities of Utah and North Carolina, said friends and supportive people encourage us to live better health, to have better health practices, see a doctor, exercise more. They may also help you directly by making you feel you have something to live for. Professor Uccino went on to say that emotional support people receive from those close to them can help put their problems into perspective. By having a secure relationship and feeling love, says Uccino, people live a much more secure, calm life. Some of you struggle with relationships. I won't ask for a raise of hands. But some of us are introverts. And we don't, it doesn't come as easy for us as for others, it seems. And you're going to have to work at it harder. But 
I'm going to really encourage you that it's worth the effort to invest in relationships. And what kind of investment are you going to make? As I mentioned earlier, time is a big one. Where we spend our time is, a, is an investment that we make. Our, our effort, our emotion, our love, these are uh, the investments that we make. Okay, just a couple of background scriptures. The first one is in Hebrews 12, verses 14 to 15. It says, Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which one, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. Okay, this scripture is an encouragement to live at peace with everyone. And I won't ask for a show of hands how many of you struggle sometimes with conflict in your relationships. And the encouragement is not to be a, an abrasive person, not to be the kind of person that goes around ticking people off, but to live at peace with people. And that's a strong Bible encouragement. I know we need to be direct in some situations, and sometimes we invite conflict by the way we handle ourselves. But it is, it is a commandment to live in peace as much as is possible. Our goal is not to live for ourselves, but it is to, uh, to live at peace and in good relationships with people. The second scripture I want to look at is a background for today's lesson is Mark 12, 29 to 31. And we, we know this passage as the great commandment. The great commandment. This is Jesus' response to a question. <coughs> Jesus answered, the most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our Lord, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So on, these, on this commandment, or on these two commandments, if you will, there is, uh, God, Jesus says there's no greater commandment. And I'd like for you to look at the slide up here just a little bit, and, and the kind of the uh, motto or the logo for this class is three circles, and those three circles are intertwined. Um, interpersonal relationships involve ourself, it involves others, and it involves God. Those three are together. And in this passage, this scripture, we see all three. We see all three uh, components in interpersonal relationships. We see ourself. It talks about ourself. talks about others. And it talks about God and the relationship that we have with those three. First, we need to love God. That's the commandment. We need to love God. We need to love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and strength. We need to love God. We need to love our neighbor and have good relationships with, with others. And often, the vertical relationship, and you're going to hear me say this again and again in this class, the vertical relationship impacts the horizontal one. Very much so. The way we love God impacts the way we love others, our ability to love others. So we have a relationship with God. Hopefully you do. Um, actually, it's not optional. Okay, you have a relationship with God. Some type of relationship with God. It can be a good one. It can be a responsive one. Or it may not be a one at, that's good at all. But we have no choice. We're going to have some kind of a relationship with God. Because God made us. God made us, and he made us to have a relationship. And we can, we can have a bad relationship, but we're going to have some kind of relationship with God. We're going to have a relationship with others. Even those of the most introverted of you who you have a relationship with others. Why? Because you exist. Okay? You were born, and therefore there is some kind of a relationship you have with others. We have a relationship with ourselves. I don't know if you've thought about that. We have a relationship with ourself. How many of you, I'd like, raise a hand if you wish, 
have a good relationship with yourself. Hey. You do, maybe. <laughs> a healthy relationship with yourself. Okay. I find that is one of the bigger struggles. I, 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 I'm terribly hard on myself. I know some of you are as well. You, you just, you, you catch yourself under your breath just berating yourself, okay, with stupid stuff that you do. And you, you have a low, low pitting of yourself. You just, you just not, you don't have a good relationship with yourself. Now there is the, the extreme of, of looking at yourself better than you should, okay, through rose-colored glasses. But the other extreme is just being so hard on yourself, not being realistic. Okay, I have a couple of things for us to ponder on before we begin the class. And I don't re expect responses from you on this, but just be thinking about this just a little bit. Are my interpersonal relationships a big deal? Are your relationships with others a big deal to you? For some of you, you say, no, no, not a big deal. I get along just fine. Okay, by myself. I don't need other people. Second question, what relationships are the most important to me? Again, we need to prioritize, and we're going to be talking about that over the next several weeks. How do I respond to a breakdown in a relationship? Oh, this is a big one. How do I respond to a breakdown? You're going to have a breakdown in a very important relationship if you are in the middle of one right now. Okay, you're going to have a break and how do you respond? And especially us men, we tend to, well, I, should, I speak for myself. You guys are maybe not like that, but I, I tend to crawl back into a shelf when there's a breakdown. And I throw stuff out of the shell, okay, out of the cave that I've retreated into. Okay, how do I respond to a, re a breakdown in relation? This is so important because you're going to need to work through those. What is the key ingredient in a good relationship? We're going to look at, a, at many of those in the next few weeks. In relationships, what difference does it make that I am a Christian? What difference should it make? Okay, what's, uh, first uh, Part where you want to take notes are then the importance of relationship. Relationships impact us personally. Our happiness is impacted by relationships. Our happiness uh, is impacted by our relationships. And I don't know if your experience is similar to mine, but there's many ways to have a bad day. Okay, there's many, many ways that you can start out and have a bad, bad day, but to have a fight with your spouse before you leave the house is probably the, 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 the most effective way to have a really bad day. It's just to have a, a little bit of an argument that didn't get resolved or something worse. And you leave the house and, you, and you're just feeling, feeling bad and your whole day is all messed up. Okay? So relationships affect our happiness. Not uh, relationships with other people, relationship with God, obviously. When, we, when God is speaking to us and we are rejecting God, that's a good way to have a bad, bad day. And, uh, and it can just preoccupy ourselves uh, throughout the day with, with unhappiness. Conflict. On the flip side, an encouragement from a spouse, from a friend, from a parent, from whoever, can be a, such, a, such a good way, a way to have a good day. So our happiness is impacted by our relationships, our ways that we handle relationships. Uh, the way we, way we uh, deal with others, the way we encourage them, the way we uh, are encouraged by others or, or vice versa. 
Secondly, uh, our outlook on life is impacted by our relationships. A positive or negative outlook on life is very much impacted by our relationships, whether they're positive or negative. And uh, you look at a guy and you say, this guy is just really unpleasant. Okay, his outlook on life is really negative. Well, what's causing that? It could be many things, but one of, one of the big things is their relationships that they have, maybe at home. And he comes to work and he's all bummed out. Okay? A lot of times it's the relationships that he left at home that are, are impacting him very, very negatively. And, uh, you know, some of the great men and women of God in the past have struggled with relationships. Uh, John Wesley was a, a person who struggled very much in his marriage. Somebody came to John Wesley's house one time and found his wife dragging him around by his hair. He struggled with his relationship with his wife. Martin Luther was another one. Martin Luther got his wife from a convent, okay? He, he, he snuck her out in a pickle barrel, okay, from the convent. But uh, I don't know how smart that was because <laughs> later on he really struggled with some relationships with his wife. He said, if I could change you, I would make you just, I would make an image out of stone and make you like that. Okay, because he wanted to remake his wife into something that he could get along with better. Our health is impacted by our relationships. Good relationships, you're going to live longer typically, you're going to have better health, you're not going to have so much stress in your life and all those other things. Finally, our future is impacted by our relationships our future life. And um, the big one I'm thinking there, of course, is our, our relationship with God. Our relationship with God is going to impact our future. And uh, salvation is a relationship, as we'll talk about a bit more later. Okay, some relationship basics. I want to share with you a quote, first of all, from Gary Smalley. And he says that life is relationships, the rest is just details. And that hit me. Life is relationships, the rest is just details. And, and there's a lot of truth in that statement. Life is relationships, the rest is just details. First point that I want to make with that is you were made for relationships. Every one of you in this room including myself, were made for relationships. God had relationships in mind when he made you. Uh, we, are we are interrelated. We can dismiss the importance of relationships if God put a need for them in our DNA. We can choose how we relate, but not whether we do. We can choose how we relate. That's our choice, but not the fact that we will relate. And looking again at the three circles on the slide, um, our relationship with others began back in the Garden of Eden when uh, Adam took a nap, <laughs> okay, and he woke up and he had a relationship. There was a relationship in his life. For, men, for us, it began as a little child. We automatically came with a relationship with our parents. And as we grow up with our siblings and with kids at school and, and kids at, and then as we get mature, perhaps more at work and in the church and in so on, uh, we have relationships with others. With God, it's not, not an optional relationship, as I mentioned earlier. With yourself, uh, you're going to have a relationship also. Second point I'd like to make is that you are made with the capacity to choose. You are made with the capacity to choose. Someone does something to you 
and you get all angry about it. And you'll hear the response, he made me do that. He made me angry. Okay, he made me. Wait, wait, hold off, back off. Did you have a choice in the matter? Anybody, comments? Did you have a choice in, your, in the matter, the way you respond? Yes. Yes, you had a choice. Yes, you do. You can't make me angry, okay? I, have the, I, I choose to be angry. Initially, the emotion sometimes tends to come up very quickly, but then how you deal with that, how you deal with that, that is your choice. As, and as we grow more mature, we need to understand those choices are there. I can choose my response to you can't make me. Okay? And I need to be responsible in how I choose uh, to relate to people. So many people would feel like if, if I can just change the other person, and for those of you who are married, uh, I know that mind that has, come in, that has come into your mind. If I could just change her, okay? We'd be cool. If I could just change her a little bit, okay? Kayla, can you change her? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. You really can't. Who can you change? Anybody? Yourself. Yourself. That's who you're responsible for. You need to be responsible for ourselves. We can choose. To, in, in our responses. Number three, you are made to take responsibility for yourself. You are made to take responsibility for yourself. You can't change the other person. You can be responsible for yourself. Okay, in this introductory uh, lesson, I want to look at a very important part about relationships. And I want you to listen up carefully. Ministry through personal relationships. How do people get saved out there? The people you relate to. They get saved primarily because you related to them as a friend. That's how they get saved. If you look at this graph, and you look at the, the percentage of people coming to Christ on the bottom of the graph, and you'll see that uh, it's very low comparatively. Special needs uh, ministries, perhaps, walk-ins to church, maybe, or a preacher. You'll see that as a very low percentage. A program that's out there, maybe a, a Sunday school or a kids club or whatever. There's a program that you, you're working through. There are special meetings that are happening, maybe at the church or wherever. You'll see those all, you know, have some value, and they do. People do respond and come to Christ. But you look over on the right. There is a, there is a thing of friendship, and the data supports that seventy over three quarters of people who come to Christ came as a result of a friendship. And so your relationship with the person at work, maybe that you have, that you have some time with, that relationship is probably going to be the reason that, that person may come to Christ. It is a personal relationship with somebody. So your relationship skills are not so important only in getting along with people, but it is in, in being a witness and being, uh, having some kind of ministry out there. Is, is being a friend to people. They learn to trust you. You establish a rapport with them. And then they come to Christ as a result. Very, very important to, to make note of. Quality of relationships. Good relationships promote godliness. We know that. Good relationships promote godliness. We gravitate toward those we associate with. And I use the example of uh, an older couple, and you've seen it. An older couple that have been together for years and years and years. That's why they look alike. They start looking alike. They, they, there's something about the people you associate with and the way they impact you. So develop those good relationships. 
develop those good relationships. Go after those people that, those mentors in your life that can be a positive thing for you. And reach out to others and be that good person for others. And, and you will impact them. And it's amazing how that works. The opposite, of course, is true. Bad relationships lead us downward. And the peer pressure, and you guys have heard a lot about peer pressure. I'm guessing you have. The peer pressure, especially in youth, is extremely, extremely powerful. The people you consider to be your peers, how are they impacting you? The relationship you have with your peers, how are they impacting you? You say, well, they don't. They don't impact me. How many of you believe that? No, it's, it's just not true. Your peers will impact you. So choosing good friends, being a good friend is so important. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And there would be so many proverbs that I could read for you here this morning about how bad company leads us astray. Proverbs 1, verse 10 says, Dear friend, if bad companions tempt you, don't go along with them. And he goes on saying, you know, so many things that happen if you uh, go and get into bad company. Now I'm going to... I'm going to give you just a bit of a... A backside to that. How, and people, young people ask me this, or I've heard it commented, how are you going to lead ungodly people to Christ if you don't associate with them? Anybody have a response? You have to associate with them and build relationships with them, but they can't be your primary relationships. Okay. I believe that's correct. They can't be your primary ones and they can't be the ones that you spend the most time with. Um, I, I think of people that, uh, if you use the analogy of someone falling into the ditch, okay? Right? And, and they're in need, okay? They need somebody to pull them out of the ditch, okay? You've got to keep good solid footing under you in order to be able to pull them out, aren't you? Yes, you do. And you need those good relationships, those solid relationships that, uh, that allow you to pull them out. Because if you abandon those and, and spend purely your time with, with unbelievers, it's dangerous because influence works both ways, doesn't it? It does. My relationship with God affects every other relationship. My relationship with God is strong. It impacts others positively. My relationship with God is, is, is shaky. Uh, then um, that's, that affects every other relationship. Don't selfishness. And this is more uh, something I came up with over the years through my personal experience and observation. Worldly relationships are based on selfishness. That's what the, the basis is for many a worldly relationship. What can you do for me? That's why I, why I said, okay, you're really good looking. I want to associate with you, okay? Because you're going to help me look good, okay? Based on selfishness. Do what feels good. Selfishness. It's the original sin. If I feel angry, I'm going to shout at you. I'm going to sulk. If I feel grouchy, I'm going to take it out on you. That's selfishness. You'll hear that. Do what feels good. Look at every relationship in the light of what it can do for me. That's selfishness. Look at every relationship in the light of what it can do for me. Oh, it just makes me feel so good. So I'm going to, you know, that's, that's where I'm going. 
And the ultimate selfishness, when I am no longer benefited by the relationship I am in, I will discard it for another. And the attitude of people going to the marriage altar today, it's hard to say is, is that, okay, this is great, I'm going to go ahead and go through with this, but so help me if it goes south, as they say, I'm out of there. I'm not going to hang in there. Number four, stand up for my rights. Selfishness. Stand up for my rights. Number five, reciprocate what others do to me. That's selfishness. Well, if they're going to give me the old silent treatment, I'm going to do it back. Okay? There's two of us can play this game. Give it back. Number six, it's a formula for misery. Any kind of relationship based on selfishness is a formula for misery. People don't realize that. If my, if my life is built around selfishness, I am a miserable, miserable person. Okay, God's standard for relationships. I'm going to move fairly rapidly here. We don't have much time left. God's standards for relationship is the example of godly men and women in the Bible. Godly men and women, not all the women and the men and women in the Bible, obviously, but the godly men and women. Those are the standard. The teachings of Jesus in the Gospels, that's the ultimate standard for relationships. Uh, the, the golden rule is an example. Uh, not retaliating when people do wrong to us. These are the standards for relationships. The letters of Paul and Peter and others give us some really good standards for relationships. Humility and love and submission and love and, and whatever. Uh, these, are, these are the standards for relationships. God's standard has been proven down through the ages. So you follow the God's standard and your relationships will work. It sets the Christian faith apart from all the others where we uh, follow those examples. Okay, salvation is a relationship. This is a concept that uh, I would like to get across to you. Either God knows us or he doesn't. Salvation is a relationship. Unfortunately, uh, many of our uh, contemporary churches, salvation is looked at as a little formula, okay? Some point in time, you went up front in a worship service. Or you said the magic words, Okay, I received Jesus as Christ as my Savior, and now I'm saved forever and ever. Okay, it's a magic formula. Okay, I did it, therefore I'm saved. I, I, would like, I would like to tell you that, yes, we do need to confess Christ as a Savior, but the, the salvation is actually a relationship that we establish, that God reaches out to us and we respond in a relationship. And that relationship is ongoing. I don't know what your relationship with God is like today, okay? It's an ongoing thing. And I'm here to tell you also that if you start turning your back on God, that relationship is going south. It's a two-way street. God is faithful. God doesn't give up, but God is there reaching out to us, and we return His love, if you will. And as we turn our backs and go the wrong way, eventually that relationship is broken. God keeps reaching out to us. It's not him that fails. It's, it's the, our side of it. It is a father-child relationship. That's what salvation is. And that is so neat as a dad. I learned to understand that God loves me. Okay? And I can really mess up so badly and God continues to love me. It's like a dad or a mother who is just, you know, dotes on their child. God dotes on me. And that's what salvation is. There are requirements for my relationship with God. Yes, there are. If you want that relationship to good, be good. What do you have to do to maintain a good relationship with God? Anybody? What do I need to do? The 
It's the same as any relationship. What do I need to do? Spend time with them. Spend time. Spend time. Spend time. Somebody else was saying something. I said communicate. Communicate. Absolutely. Spending time, communicate. This is a relationship that is very, very important. We need to maintain that relationship. There are rewards, obviously, to this maintaining a relationship with God. My relationship with God impacts my earthly relationship. It changes the way I look at people. It should, very much so. My relationship with God should change the way I look at people. My responses to other people are tempered by the fact that I have a relationship with God. His love is in my heart. And boy, that changes other relationships. If God's love is in your heart, my relationship with others is, is, is changed. His spirit constrains my actions. He takes my rebellious, proud, selfish heart and changes it as I yield to him. That's it then, folks. Thanks for being a good part of this class. Thank you for your input. I just want to encourage you to invest in relationships. Relationships are a good investment. Invest in your relationship with God and with others. God bless.